You're now live. Morning, everyone. It's Friday afternoon. I hope you're well. I hope you had a great week. And I hope the sun's shining with you like it is here. It's absolutely glorious after hailstones this morning. Um, I set my chair up and went to do my hair. And when I came back down, my dog was sat here in front of my phone. And I was Take it away, Bo, you can do the live today. Um, so today, I'm sure you know, I'm talking to gut expert, Hannah Richards again from the Gut Clinic. Um, Hannah and I have done a few lives now, and we're working together quite a bit. I love working with Hannah because she, um, well, she helps people get to the bottom of, her, of their health problems. And she helps them to do that naturally using a common sense approach looking at the whole person um, and and of course when she does that I can help um, help her clients by increasing their nutrient intake through amazing organic cold pressed juices um, so here's Hannah now I'm going to let her in and we'll be connected in a minute I'm just going to wave to a few people Hi, Hannah. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> did you hear that? You nearly did a live with my dog. He was he was right here, sat on my chair, ready to rock. Oh my God. Well, I, I'm quite good. I'm a, I'm a good animal whisperer. Amazing. I'll bring him back. I'll bring him back. If he would be good, I'd bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just saying, we've done a few lives and yes. we certainly do pick some personal topics, don't we? Mm. So yes. last week, of course, it was poo. They're personal topics, but they're really important. Um, yeah. And I think you're giving phenomenal information for people to really help them. So today we've, we, we've chosen parasites. The beautiful topic of parasites. So exactly, let's yeah. kick off, Hannah. Then, so tell us what. Tell is, us all about parasites. Tell us all about it. What first of all, what is a parasite? A sure. Par well, I think I think one of the biggest things about parasites is that um, they're more of a threat than people realise, and the reason is that is because very few people a know about them, hmm. um, and there there's a misconception that they're only prevalent or they only exist in third world countries as well um and then because people aren't always aware of the symptoms that play out in humans they are then enabled to test for them because they're not looking for parasites in the first place um and in the past there's been really inadequate ways of testing for parasites as well it's quite common that labs, all labs do them now, but in the past it has been quite a very a niche, un, um, a niche subject and undiscovered area in health. Um, so um, basically a parasite is an organism that um, lives on a host and, and steals, draws all the nourishment from it to feed itself so i mean when we have when women have babies for example they're almost parasites yeah. the fetus is the parasite mm. drawing on the host the mother to feed itself for the duration that it hangs out there um so yeah that's a really simple analogy of, of a parasite um there are nearly three million parasitic um organisms on uh, on on the earth um flukes parasites um worms and we'll go through some of the ones that people will have heard of are a little bit common um and more people are infected than they realize um and lots of parasites can be symbiotic so they can live with you they can have a nice time with you and they can they almost sometimes when a person for example is eating too much sugar or they've got inflammation in the body. I always think parasites are a bit like, do you remember Pac-Man on the BBC game? <laughs> yeah. And those little eggs that went round eating. So parasites can sometimes be symbiotic, meaning that they, they help the inflammation in a person's body. So when you've got a parasite, you've got to say, well, why, what, wh where have I let my health get to? And is this parasite helping me mm. because it is a symbiotic? So they're symbiotic, until they become problematic when they become infectious. Um, 
so so yeah that's sort of the, i mean they've been around for centuries and um we've sort of almost forgotten about them and don't uh give them enough credit for causing disruption um but but yeah there's lots of there's along the paradigm of parasites they can be helpful and then very not very helpful at all Sure. So Hannah, how would we know? How would we know if we've got one? What would what would the symptoms be if we'd got a naughty parasite, for example? Um, yeah, I think that so so normally um a lot of very common symptoms that obviously can cross the board of all symptoms, signs and symptoms that we see. Um some really easy common some well, here are some ones that you might not think about. So um itchy bum. So some people have itchy bum, which is actually um, pinworm, which is um, uh, quite common in children because the eggs hatch at night and then almost spread. And if you have had an infection of pinworm, anyone out there, you have got to absolutely boil and clean everything in that bedroom. Curtains, uh, bed linen, absolutely the whole works because they can live, in, they can live on any, any surface um so grinding teeth at night is quite a big parasite infection as well um then you've got lots of all the digestive issues so constipation and diarrhea can be a bit more fungal um nervous irritability very ir irritable people can often have these infections um lack of hunger but also a ravenous uh, hunger as well always wanting to eat never wanting or never being satisfied with food um pe people with pets are often more susceptible people eat sushi are often more susceptible mm. people who eat meat are more susceptible because you can get pork tapeworms and fish tapeworms and all the different tapeworms from animals as well and that is normally the way that we get parasites from them um people who swim in rivers and lakes and creeks so that's me um but you're just it's it's really about um the more you put yourself out there of course the more you're going to be susceptible to picking up these bugs and grubs and then of course depending on where in the world you live depends which infection is more prevalent to you. And I heard also, um, when I worked with a naturopath in the past, if you have an infection from a, a certain country, it's best to use um, a medicine from that country, especially if you're using a, a natural medicine, because they've evolved together kind of thing. And, and a medicine from that country is really very effective. Yeah, I'd well, I think... I think most because parasites mostly reared their head, if you like, in third world countries, or certainly where Chinese tradi uh, more traditional methods of medicine. Basically, what I'm saying is non-traditional Western medicine, because our medicine for parasites is antibiotics. And the problem is with antibiotics and parasites is that if a person's vitality level is very low, and you go in clear Blastocystis hominis with uh, a nice three week dosage or seven day dosage of antibiotics, you can put that person in a worse vitality place at the same time as do, you know, not doing, not doing any good to the, the gastro lining. Um, but yeah, there are lots of blastocystis hominis is massively prevalent in, in the States, for example, in Canada, they reckon one in two people have it out there. Then you've got Giardia lambora, which often people get when they caught, when they go traveling. That's in that can happen in a cycle, so people can get symptoms, you know, initially, and then nothing happens for two weeks, and then six weeks, and then the symptoms come back. Um, things like Ascaris, which happens to be, if I'm allowed to have a favorite parasite, it would be, <laughs> which might be a bit strange. Um, but Ascaris is a nematode, and it um, is normally normally found in subtropical and tropical areas of the world mainly asia um and the female ascaris worm can grow up to 18 18 um, centimeters long and so it can be really really quite quite long and and so sometimes you can have pain um, along the gastro tract at the ilium um where almost bundles of parasites can sort of 
uh, hang out together. And so you can have this sort of hip pain. Um, and that's because they found a pocket of the intest of the, the, the tract to be in. Um, and it can sort of also be a bit of a dull pain there. So that might be something that you're looking out for. Um, so, yeah, lots of different all around the world. But because of cross travel these days, mm -hmm. we are susceptible to all the different types of parasite out there. Absolutely. Um, what is the most common one you see in your clients? Um, uh, what would be the most common one and, and the easiest? Which is the easiest one to get rid of? I would say, I would say, okay, so two things. I'm just going to find my, so I would say that Blastocystis hominis is the most prevalent uh, parasite I see hands down. Is it? And just remind us what that is again. Well, it's, it basically, it's a parasite. It used to be, it, people used to think that it was a um, bacteria um, and it's now been classed as a parasite. And it's normally found at the same time with, um, Diamenta fragilis, which is another another parasite, but blasto can be uh, symptomatic or asymptomatic, meaning you can have it and you don't know, or you can have it and it can be the cause of lots of your gut issues. Sometimes, I, I mean, I've probably got four people with blasto at the moment, and all their symptoms are really quite different. I've got one lady who definitely thinks that she's had it for almost forty years, lots of stomach issues running in the family and she can't put on any weight whatsoever. So we have just started to clear blasto and she's gained two kilos already. Um, I've got another uh, athlete, young athlete, who has got gut, some severe gut issues and we found blastocystis hominis in her. She has got massively, massive bloating and she's an athlete so there's no fat on her whatsoever and you can clearly see the bloating from, um, from from gut issues. So we started to clear that. Um, I'm just trying to think who else has got blasto. Um, so this, so my point really is that the symptoms can all be really quite different mm. in lots of different people. Um, but often, you know, I get to the point where I test, I don't test everyone because it is, it can be expensive. Some people like to know immediately. They like to have a gut MOT and go, right, this is the answer. Mm. But often I just say that the moment a really good diet stops working for you, that would be the moment you want to go and do a bit more investigation. Because if you've got a bug, if you've got a parasite, they often hang out in packs, like a cocktail of parasites, if you like. And if you've picked up a scarist, he definitely will be hanging out with more friends. Um, and and if you've got them, they'll only you'll only get there'll only be a point where a good diet will will make you feel good. And then you'll get to the point where nothing is making you feel good and therefore you should test. And is it a gradual change that you'll see your site, you, you know, the effects, the symptoms of having uh, a parasite? Is it gradual or is it quite quick? I suppose it depends how quickly they populate. Yeah, I think it's I mean, I, of the ones that I've seen and the people that have had them, I think blasto, blasto is one that can live with you for so long you might not even know you ever have it. And that's when it's sort of asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. um, but when people do have a lot of gut issues that they can't get to the bottom of, I always reckon it's going to be blasto. So they're going to be have uh, bloating, constipation a bit, irregular bowels, um, but the other interesting thing about parasites is that they can really affect your mental and emotional psyche mm. as well. So people with strong alloids, and this is really only my experience, um, by the way. Um, people, when I've tested for strong alloids in the past, there can be a real anger in those, in those people. And of course, if you've got parasites, they can live in all different organs of the body. Um, so... For example, Ascaris will get, in, you'll be infected with Ascaris through the skin. Um, I've just got a little list of where they all get infected. Um, so Ascaris will come in through the skin. Um, a lot are really infect, uh, come in through um, animal, animal and feces more than anything else. Um, uh, Trichinella, and that comes in through the eyes. And often you'll see, if you look up, <laughs> parasites on the internet you will 
in, in lots of countries, people can read that you've got parasites really quite well. And you can, they can be coming in and out. You know, there's a, there's a great case of somebody having a parasite literally crawling out of their eye. So Toxoplasma is the interesting one. That is the one that cats can get and they infect rats. Um, and pregnant women need to be very careful when they have um, cats in the house because they cats carry Toxoplasma gondii. Um, um, and then, you know, the interesting thing about all this brain surgery and brain cancers and hemorrhages and things like that is that strongoloids um, can manifest and start life up in the brain as well, as can toxiplasma and as can Ascaris. So a lot of the time in when we look at the brain as an organ, people don't know why things happen. And one of the theories is that it's parasites um, infestation in there. Oh, um, and then in the t intestines, there's Giardia, Giardia lambora. And we know that because we call it sort of traveler's diarrhea or when we go traveling, people get funny tummy and mm -hmm. normally it's Giardia. So you've eaten something, the food has been infected and it's got straight into the intestines. Um, again, all tapeworms come in straight through the intestines. Um, so, so yeah, that's how you can get infected through them. But, but different parasites for different parts of the world, um, uh, just because of different climates and different foods and different levels of hygiene and, and lots of different things. So I guess this is a, why we say wash your hands before you eat, if you're eating with your hands in particular. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and also, when you talk about pets, then, how do we get them from pets? Is it literally through, for example, if we have a dog, we're picking up their mess on their walk? Yeah. Would mainly. that be then somehow? They make <laughs> yeah, it's mainly through. Yeah, it's not very pretty, but it's through feces. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, okay. you know, the problem is, is that the only way of entry of parasites, you know, obviously is through the skin or the eyes or any orifice that we have and that is how we get infected so it's basically from animal to feces to food um, which sounds gross but you know it's absolutely <laughs> true and it comes down to yeah that having happens. wonderful hygiene and unfortunately you cannot you cannot be sure that the food you're eating when you go out to a restaurant is, is clean because you don't know the hygiene uh, methods of the people that are using it and the chain you know by the time mm. you've got a uh, burger and chips on your uh, plate how many pairs of hands have touched that food mm. before it got to you mm. that's the mm. real question we mm. want to be asking and it didn't start in this in the country you got the food in it probably started three countries away yeah. So it's uh, the, ch the, the chain is, is quite big and therefore yeah. loads of room for error. Absolutely. And a lot of premises, food premises, do have the food hygiene um, on, their, on their door, you know, scores on the doors. Yeah. Five out of five is what you're looking for. But as you yeah. say, you can't, you can't know the traceability of their suppliers. It, it's, um, you just have to trust, I guess, that good people look for good suppliers, you know, with, with equally high standards. So yeah, yeah, we'd yeah that. exactly, exactly. So Hannah, how would you test for parasites? Is it a stool sample or how would you test? Um, yeah, it's mainly a stool sample. So I use two types of testings. I use PCI from Dr. Omar Amin, who is a good friend and parasitologist. He's the leading parasitologist. Um, and I've done a lot of work with him and he's just brought out a new book, which is a total research book. So, um, but there are lots of books on parasites if anyone wants, a, uh, wants anything to read. Um, so I will use his labs because he started his labs for people who die of parasite infections in, in third world countries where lots of parasite infections kill lots of communities because of the water and because parasites are the most manipulative little things you can come across. Their design is to take everything you have. You know, look how we use the word in, in language, you know, they're a parasite. You know, it's not something mm. you want to ever be called, is it? Mm. So in the animal world, they are very, very manipulative and they're designed to get what they want. Um, 
And so Dr. Omar Amin opened PCI labs um, and he has now brought it to Europe under Emma Lane. And those testings are for such a huge scope of parasites. So if I suspect somebody's re been reinfected, I will use PCI. And if I'm if I don't, if it's more digestive issues, I'll use in vivo um, through a stool test to look at other digestive markers as well. Plus everyone's so into the microbiome these days. Yeah. Um, and so the in vivo test will list gram positive and negative and pathogenic bacteria. So you can see what you've got and what you haven't got kind of thing. Brilliant. But Brilliant. yes, it's a stool test. You have to test through stool. Um, and that is really the only, only conclusive way. And just like everything, Rosie, it cannot be conclusive because unless you're testing a body's, a person's bodily fluids every single day, you might miss things. So it's an overhaul. It's, it's always like a snap. Testing is like a snapshot. You know, I take a picture of you now, but I could take a picture of you in half an hour and you could look completely different. Yeah, and it's the same in functional, in all types of testing, um, I suppose, other than blood. Parasites are so clever, aren't they? I mean, I'm just thinking about ticks. You know, they, they animals brush against grass, the tick falls off and, or, or jumps off and jumps on a blade of grass until the next animal comes along and then hops on that. I mean, exactly. So yeah, clever. the sheep parasite does that. Yeah, the most yeah. Manipulative, manipulative one there probably is, but absolutely. And they pose as other things that, you know, they pose as other <laughs> things to get into the body. And then that's how we get the parasite in the human because the animal is infected. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but really interesting. You were talk you just asked me about um, some of the symptoms. And I forgot to say that, um, you know, once once you can be infected by a parasite and um, it can it goes into the intestines, but not but often it can get into the lungs as well. And Ascaris is an, an example of this, Ascaris lam lamboroides. And it um, once it gets infected and migrates to the lungs and hatches, you can then get this very persistent coughing, a bit like a dry cough that you can't get rid of. Nothing really shifts it. And that is one of the telltale signs of, a, of an Ascaris infection. So if you have been in subtropical places in the world or Asia, then and you've got a dry cough, you might, and you've got digestive issues, you might be looking at something like Ascaris. It's quite a, a strong uh, telltale. Right. So what should people really take from our conversation today? Don't be frightened or paranoid that now you might have a parasite. Um, but it's just to have it in the back of your mind. You know, if you've got some symptoms um, that Hannah's mentioned today, and if, you, if, you're, if you're going to your GP about your symptoms and they haven't thought of the parasite, then it's, it's maybe something to, um, to bring up. Yeah, exactly. I think that, you know, people can poo-poo parasites and it's really an ignorance of not knowing how to deal with them, in my mind. Um, and so often a Helicobacter pylori infection, which is a bacteria that lives in the stomach, is tested quite prevalently because mm. it causes peptic ulcers and issues in the duodenum. But often you will just get about of uh, you'll test for it through a blood test and then they give you a triple X therapy to clear it. And because you've had an infection of Hello, uh, HP for such a long time, you then deplete your hydrochloric acid levels. So you deplete your first line of defense in the body and then you blast them out even more with three rounds of antibiotics, mm -hmm. leaving you almost defenseless going back into the world yeah. without any repair system gone in. Um, so... It is, you've got to be careful clearing, clearing parasites with antibiotics because of the nature of them that they've already stolen a lot from you from the time they've been in you. So the question is, what is deficient? What is inefficient? And what defenses are down in me mentally, emotionally, physically? Um, so that when I am, and, and if you do have a parasite infection, if anyone out there does, 
are you ready to clear it? Because quite frankly, it's been having a lovely time hanging out in you. You've been a wonderful host, a lovely host of the party, and it doesn't want to leave. You've got to make sure that your vitality is jumping off the walls so that you can go in and kill it. And actually, I've got a few people, again, I've got a few people who are going through that heximer effect that when you, you know, you kill the parasite, it's basically like a little fight in the gut. And when you have that, when that fight appears, then you're going to feel some symptoms. And when those symptoms occur, I know we've targeted the bugs and then, then it's about clearing out all those endotoxins. Brilliant. So, Brilliant. I know, I love it, but you, I mean, obviously you've got years and years of experience, so you know the journey of healing someone, of getting rid of that parasite, what to look for, what the signs are. I love that. It's, it's such a common yeah. sense. It is common it? sense, and it's, but it's also, you know, that's, you know, we talk about this cleanse we're doing together. Like, you know, there's so many wonderful components of it. If we just take carrot juice, for example, I use carrot juice all the time when people have fungal infections. And quite frankly, most people do. If you've got foggy thinking or a few sore joints or a bit of a white tongue or vaginitis, or you're just not on, on your top game, a bottle of carrot juice is going to do you some wonders as a regular thing in your life because of the compounds in it, clear fungal up, just like oregano and grapefruit seed extract and all those other things do. So there is science to juice cleansing and broth cleansing mm. and just cleansing the body. And, and I'm going on, but when people feel better after a cleanse, Rosie, and I know you know this, everyone else out there, when you feel better after a cleanse, it's because you've starved the bugs. Mm. And so then you, it's a great way of seeing whether you need to do some more work because you feel wonderful after a cleanse. You feel bright and skin looks good and all these things. And you've got to slowly reintroduce the food back um, so that you don't just go back to where you came from. Absolutely. Absolutely, Hannah. So there's a couple of questions that have come up. Christine mm. asks, what blood test do you do to see if you've got a parasite? I don't, really I don't do blood tests, Christine. No. I do stool testing. It's really the conclusive way to test. Ellen's saying, what a mind of information, Hannah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she is. She's full of amazing information. <laughs> Has anyone else got any questions? Do you feel like you might have something? Um, I don't, I think everyone's just been um, sitting and sort of absorbing all of this information. I must say you use languages. You could have been talking about plants because they all sound quite Latin. Um, yeah. Uh, the words that you use. Well, um, they've, they've, so, they've, they've been around since, you know, for, since 400 BC, these parasites, yeah. the first one recorded. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, they're intelligent things. I think that's why <laughs> I like them. <laughs> They're sneaky, aren't they? Um, so Hannah, also for anyone that doesn't know yet, we wanted to talk about um, the parasite questionnaire that we are offering within our five day juice and broth cleanse, which starts um, just over a week's time, Tuesday, the 23rd of March and runs for five days through to the Saturday, the 27th of March. Exactly. And um, it's a really exciting collaboration for us, isn't it? It's brilliant. We've got actually such a lot of content to share with, ev with everyone. And yeah. I think this is for you. If you feel like you've lost your mojo would you say would you agree yeah you've, you you're feeling maybe low you know we're all so busy we've all been so busy through lockdown yeah. just looking after everyone else making sure the kids have got what they need homeschooling has our part you know our partner have they got what they need making meals planning all of this business and I think we're always the last one to get looked after with the last one that we sort of look after aren't we we're always at the bottom of the barrel so we've got this five-day cleanse which is really about self-love it's to look mm. after you and Hannah do you want to extend on that I mean I've got a few things here to show everyone yeah in a I think I think if you're looking you know sorry I was um, gonna say your sister just called me 
And if you, <laughs> if you, um, if you are looking for a spring in your step, you know, I don't think Rosie and I are sitting here saying you need to be juicing every day of your life, and that is the only that's the only way to help. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful tool. It is a wonderful medicinal tool to juice and broth. I am the brother. Juicy, juicy. Rosie <laughs> is the juicer. I am juicy. Um, and it's a great way. What we didn't want to just, we wanted to collaborate in a way that we give you, share our knowledge. So every night we've got a talk on wellness. We've got a Facebook group. You can ask me every question. I'm going to be on my A game answering questions on Facebook for those five days. And I'll be on my A game because I'll be high on juice. <laughs> um, that's phenomenal value isn't it that's phenomenal value already to be able to have you know such a qualified naturopath at your disposal to ask your questions about any symptoms you might have exactly um, yeah and so you're going to have a lot of tools as well so we're going to give you a, a urine a urine strip and everyone's going to do a little pee before we start yeah. and then i can tell you what they all mean we're sending you some charcoal so yeah. you can see how long food stays in your body and how long it takes to leave your body. Retention time, exactly. You're gonna get my parasite questionnaire from one of the world's biggest parasitologists and I will be going through that as well. Um, and we're doing a little candida test. You're gonna get a copy of my book and you're just gonna get the world's best juices. I only like doing things that are organic. I am all about being organic. Otherwise, what's the point? Supplements have got to be organic. Your hair products, your lipstick, this is. Um, everything's got to be organic. Otherwise, you are stressing your liver and your kidneys and everything out. And I just don't see the point. So this is cold pressed organic juice delivered to your door. Five days of Rosie and me hoping that you will be in a much better health position when you finish to take some of those bits and pieces into the rest of your family and the rest of your life. Yeah, it's going to help the whole family. And it's like pressing the reset button. You know, if you found it hard to get back to your healthy lifestyle, you know, it's hard to break uh, bad habits that you've formed. This is for you because this yeah. will really, it, it won't only give you energy, it will give you motivation. Um, exactly. So our five Zoom calls, Hannah, the content that we're providing, you're going to do a Digestion 101, which is amazing. So people I'm gonna are... Exactly. I'm going to take people mouth to anus and tell <laughs> you what lovely. <laughs> You're going to do a tongue and nail analysis. Yeah, I'm going to get everyone sticking their tongues out to me. And I'm going to tell you what they mean or the things you can look out for. Exactly. You're going to talk about emotions and the gut. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about organic and seasonal, um, yeah. the importance uh, of both. And I'm also going to talk about lowering the toxic load. So, mm -hmm. for example, what things in your home might be increasing your toxic load and what things you can swap out. So things like, you know, I, I used to buy them as well, these plug-in um, things that smell, make your house smell nice. Well, mm -hmm. what they were doing were poisoning my airspace and we don't know that. So I'm going to give you some resources uh, for organic shopping, for home homeware, cookware, yeah. things that you want to put on your skin, things that smell nice that aren't toxic. So I'm going to give you lots of recommendations of, um, of where to find all those. So that's five days, um, five days full of amazing goodness. And I think that's life changing. If you're, um, if you're very new to natural health, um, this is going to be an incredible resource to help you and your family moving forward. Um, so yeah, so Tuesday the 23rd to Saturday the 27th of March. Now the closing date is next Friday. We don't want anyone rushing in last minute. Um, so we want you to we want you to join as soon as possible. We've got a yeah. few spaces left. Um, but jumping into a cleanse last minute isn't good. So please do, if you're gonna come and join us, which I hope you are, then join us before next Friday, which is when our um, booking system will close.
Um, and it's um, just head to my website, thehealthyjuicecompany.co.uk, and you'll see there's um, a tab under the shop tab uh, for our cleanse, and also there's a little feature on the top right of the home page as well. It's yeah. 450 pounds, and that includes absolutely everything absolutely everything you don't there's no add-ons no extras um it, it's not a sales pitch to further things no. this is purely a package complete just for you delivered to your door and and it's going to be exciting yeah it's i'm really be... looking forward to it i'm really looking forward to it and you know if anyone's got any questions and they want to dm me personally or rosie personally about the cleanse i've picked up the phone to quite a lot of people about the cleanse because they've got pre-existing health conditions they just want to check it out they just need a bit more information more than happy to set up a call with anyone who's interested um so please do reach out but i can't wait it's nearly fully booked isn't it and we're very very excited um and hopefully we will be doing more yeah absolutely yeah we will, we will, and we might have different themes, who knows, but the gut is the most important place, um, as yes. we all know, yeah, absolutely, exactly. so uh, yeah, yeah. So anyone got any questions? I don't see any more. That's um, fine. So... Everyone's wondering whether they've got a parasite. <laughs> Looking at their dog or, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, or also, if anyone's got any other suggestions that they'd like us to chat about on another live mm. another day, um, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Cravings and what do they mean, for example? That would be an interesting one, I think. Um, quite a lot of people. Uh, sh a sweet tooth, sugar cravings. That's really, yeah. that's really yeah. common. Um, Actually, somebody's just said, would you like to hear more about getting rid of nasty stuff in our homes? I think that's wonderful. And, and, and it is, you know, one of my questions to my clients is often, do you, how do you cope with, um, you know, new carpet smells or being in a car and it's new or uh, chemical sprays to clean your kitchen? Because when you can't, or candles is a big one when you sort of feel a bit nauseous when candles are burning, it is a sign that your liver isn't doing its job as well as it should be. So everything, remember that everything is a sign and that sign is telling you to do something about it. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got toxicity everywhere, so toxic load is a big one. Yeah, and um, as I said on another live, just because there's a brand sitting on a shelf it doesn't mean that it's it's good for us. It, um, it, no, I mean, tests have been done that it's safe, but it doesn't mean it's good for us. Um, so I think it's, it's good to um, really have that information to hand, to know what certain chemicals can do within our body. Totally. Um, yeah, everything, you know, the air we breathe, what we put on our skin and what we ingest, what we eat and drink um, are, are the most important things. So, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, so within our cleanse, that's information that exactly. um, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna be delighted to share. Now, twenty six Frognall, I know that I know you. You're a lovely client, and I just can't remember your name. I can't remember oh. because it's a different name. So, um, the question is: When travel is next allowed, do you have any suggestions what one could take if going to places such as Thailand, India, <laughs> Africa? Um, obviously hand hygiene, no ice, etc. But how else can people be careful um, about, uh, I mean, street vendors? It's always great to get into the authentic world when you travel, isn't it? Yeah, um, I'm just, I always get the name of this wrong. So I'm just Googling it for you. Frognal 26. <laughs> 26 Frognal. <laughs> so when i was in uh egypt with uh dr omar amin we um we would oh there it is there it is you're probably going to be shocked at this suggestion but there is a product called pepto bismol and it's pink and people use it when they have heartburn and, and all those things now i would not recommend it for using that at all but when you take the tablet and you chew the tablet, what it does is it's a bit like in the same way that cranberry might work for a urinary tract infection. 
it causes any grubs and bugs to stick to the inside of the intestinal tract and drags anything out with it. So if you're eating in a place um, or if you're in a place that you're a bit, a bit nervous about, get a load of Pepto-Bismol and that will do the job. I know that because I've done it with Dr. Omar Amin. Um, if you've got indigestion, I wouldn't take it. But for not to pick up a parasite, it does work. Brilliant. Jeanette, Jeanette is 26 months old. Thank you, Jeanette, for clarifying that. It's nice to, to, to talk to you by your first name. Um, Tamara said, should you take antibiotics eventually once you feel vital? Or can the par parasite be cleansed out with antibiotics? Um, should you take antibiotics eventually to feel vital? <laughs> I mean, if you're not feeling vital when you take antibiotics, you will feel less than vital when you finish taking them. Um, I'm not saying they're bad or not necessary, but there are just other ways to clear parasites from the body and not to destroy the mucosal lining and the intestinal tract at the same time. Um, and, you know, put pressure on the liver. So you can feel more vital than you ever would when you do a proper parasite cleanse because you're probably clearing fungal and other stuff at the same time. Dawn suggested maybe we do a session on the liver. Why not? That's my favourite. My, the grandfather of all organs, John. Yeah. The, yeah. The, seat of, the seat of addiction and frustration and anger. One of my favourites. Um, so yeah, that would be brilliant on the liver. Fantastic. So I think that's everyone else. I think that's everyone else's questions. Good, good. Um, so great. Yeah, Jeanette says great tip. Good tip there. Brilliant. All right, then. So shall we sign off? Let's do it. Thank <laughs> you for having me again. I hope um, the parasite chat's been fun. I do love chatting about parasites. Because they're so interesting. <laughs> but then maybe that's just me. But yeah, what really personal thing can we talk about again next week? It's been poo, it's been parasites. <laughs> I'll have to do another pee if anyone's got any suggestions. Maybe pee, we can talk about pee. Let's talk about pee. Let's do, yeah, complete the three, <laughs> talk about pee. Brilliant. <laughs> You're so um, welcome, everyone. Thank you. Have a lovely weekend. Yes, um, have a happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday. And I hope it's sunny where you are too. <gasps> All right, Hannah, should we sign off for today? Let's do it. Thank you for having me again. And You're so welcome. Looking forward to our next Friday. We're going to do it next Friday? Why not? Okay, let's do that. <laughs> All right, Hannah, take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>